So, do you want to know everything about the air-to-air -air modes? <laughs> I don't expect you to remember all these stats. Just get a general idea and learn what modes are better than others and what. Here you go. So first, IRST. Remember, the IRST only looks 30 degrees to the side and up and 15 degrees down. Its IRST modes are not always what you might expect. For example, its vertical scan is pretty gipped. It's four degrees wide and it it doesn't go up far at all. It, it, it only goes up 16 degrees and down 14 degrees. So rolling while holding lock won't really help you as you detect people below your nose almost as well as above. The HUD shows plus or minus 12 degrees. So the actual zone only extends a little bit further than what you see on the HUD. It will scan in 0.4 seconds. So don't roll too fast or it'll go right by them, but otherwise it's your fastest scanning mode. Iris T search mode. It looks 30 degrees to the sides and plus or minus 15 degrees in elevation so pretty large. No mode scans as big an area as this one. It takes two and a half seconds to scan. However, you can cut the scan refresh rate in half by looking to the size, which only looks zero to 30 degrees and only uses half the HUD. So, so if you had a target on the left side and then slid the IRST left, it would be on the same place on the HUD since the left or right slew is really just making it only scan that half of the original scan area. I really recommend to actually decrease gain. Like, decrease gain a lot. It doesn't seem to affect the target marks. Only interference, making it easy to pick out targets. Don't underestimate the TP scan mode. It has powerful, unique abilities when I get to my co-op video. With turning down gain being surprisingly helpful, I can get up to 30 kilometer locks on fighters and military power. Your laser ranges only up to three to six and a half kilometers, depending on how big the target is. And after eight seconds of no laser range, it will start to use the radar to range. Radar ranging, radar ranging uses the normal scan mode, so it will set off enemy RWR as a search mode. Then we have optical and helmet. Basically the same, except optical is slewed on the HUD and the helmet obviously slewed to the HMS. Remember, the iris T only looks 30 degrees to the side and up. So it won't cover the full 60 degrees of the helmet sight or 45 degrees of the off-bore sight of the R73. When you have IRST lock, the circle shows the direction the IRST points. So the target is only covered when centered, unless in gun mode. The HUD scale is 30 degrees in all directions for the circle. So if the circle is at the border of your HUD, the target is 30 degrees from your nose. So beware, since the, the limits below the nose are only minus 15 degrees, the circle can only go halfway down the HUD square before you lose lock. All IRS T modes take one and a half seconds to fully lock. Radar. All right, so 
Radar vertical scan. It's six degrees wide, so two degrees wider than IRST vertical scan. And it looks 37 to 45 degrees up like a proper vertical scan. So if in a dogfight and you really need to find someone, probably better to select a radar over IRST vertical scan, which will not look up as far by like a factor of three, 45 degrees for radar versus 16 degrees up for iris T vertical scan. It does its full scan in 2.2 seconds. However, it does a two bar scan, so it should cover the vertical area in half of that, but still be beware rolling too fast and missing someone. This mode takes one to two seconds to lock. Now, radar search modes. For search modes, you will notice that in HUD mode, your HUD scale is 150 kilometers. And in pursuit mode, uh, your HUD scale is 50 kilometers. All the radar scan modes are plus or minus 25 degrees in azimuth. And if you slew left or right, it will scan 15 to 65 degrees to the side, giving you a nice 10 degree overlap between scan areas. Pretty much all the other specs depend on the mode you are currently using. The head on slash encounter slash HPRF mode. Vertically, the scan area of this mode is 11 degrees up to uh, 50 kilometers of selected range. Beyond 50 kilometers selected range, the vertical scan area decreases a bit to nine and a half degrees. Of note, right now the selected range wheel doesn't seem to work and instead your radar and Delta H is working off the TDC range, but uh, I kind of like it. So just remember, if TDC is at low ranges, Delta H will move the antenna a lot. At high ranges, it will move the antenna a little. Once we can select a range with the range wheel, a 10 kilometer range will have every plus or minus one Delta H move the radar elevation 5.7 degrees. Now in head-on mode, below 50 kilometers, your scan time is 3.7 seconds. Above 50 kilometers selected range, your scan time becomes 4.5 seconds. And lock time will be two to seven seconds, though usually two, and it should only really go up to seven seconds if you're pulling high G. As for the notch, it's 230 kilometers per hour normally, up to 20 kilometers range. But between 20 and 60 kilometers range, the notch increases steadily to 325 kilometers an hour. If you want to maintain lock on someone that turns away, make sure you have lots and lots of closure or you switch to the pursuit mode. Okay. Now the pursuit slash D slash Dogon slash MPRF scan mode. This mode is 11 degree scan elevation no matter the distance you select. Lock time will take one to four seconds. You gotta remember that in this mode, you only have about 20 to 35 kilometer detection, but it's also your only all aspect radar mode. Yeah, I, I know there's the interleaved auto mode, but just think of that one as combining these two modes. And <laughs> I have a poor opinion of the auto mode for locking anyways. In the pursuit mode, your notch behavior is also different for aspect. It's 210 kilometers an hour on the rear aspect side of the notch 
and 270 kilometers per hour for the front aspect side of the notch. Your cursor in both these head-on and pursuit radar modes is eight degrees wide and five kilometers tall. Now, TWS. TWS front and rear is basically the same, just about half as inaccurate in range as the regular modes. It will also do two things compared to one in FC3. Like FC3, it will automatically lock once inside missile range. However, it will also auto-select the most dangerous target. It does this based on dividing the speed of the target by their range, which basically means the target that will merge with you first. Useful, since we do not know target speed without data link, allowing you to pick the guy actually heading to you at Mach 1.5 and not the slow attacker next to him. You'll know it's on when your TDC extends in range. This mode was specifically designed for intercept without data link. I plan to use TWS by default for search. Switch to pursuit mode within 20 to 35 kilometers, but when co-op mode is fully implemented and starts forcing pursuit mode, it's basically better to just enable co-op mode instead of switching the radar knob to pursue. Your cursor in TWS is eight degrees wide like before, but now it is 10 kilometers tall. Also to note, all radar modes have a same speed filter of 150 kilometers per hour above 15 kilometers. So if you're chasing someone, you wanna be going more than 150 kilometers an hour faster than them, or you'll lose lock. Below 15 kilometers, this same speed filter becomes only 50 kilometers an hour. And just like the notch filter, this filter is removed if you are five degrees or more below the target. For those of you that attack from a lower altitude or can dive in a crank fast enough to get that five degrees below the target. Be aware that when locked, the HUD scale for the rhombus or diamond, which indicates the direction your radar points, is 70 degrees to each side and 45 degrees up and down. Be aware that the rhombus is not stabilized. If you lock someone and turn right with a 90 degree bank, as you turn, the rhombus won't drift down toward the target, but it will drift to the left of the screen as the horizon stabilized radar is really just slowing left and not down as you're turning to the right. People also ask about Roca or when the HUD shows R. Basically, if you lock someone beyond missile range, your Delta H knob will decide the height of the target circle to keep you at the altitude above or below target that your Delta H is at. Then, when close to max range, the circle will level with the target. So you either point at the target or go to their altitude. So basically, if I want to ambush someone or if I want to stay above or below them until I get into missile range, you can keep the Delta H at where it was when you locked them or move it to the altitude difference that you want to maintain until missile range. So basically, if I wanted to stay 6,000 meters below the target until I got into missile range, 
I would keep the Delta H or radar elevation at plus six after locking them up. And then once I got into missile range, the circle would drift up from keeping me 6,000 meters below them and drift up to the target to actually show the target's intercept point. You can disable this by putting Delta H at zero, which will just have the circle show the target's intercept point at all times. In addition, eventually we will have GCI, or the Lazur data link, which changes the scan modes also, but that's for a later time. And with radar, remember to fire while pointing at the circle for the highest missile energy. The circle is not just meant as a best interception point for you, but it's also meant as a missile aiming circle, the spot to give your missile the best path to the target. All right, and just before I go, let's say you get jammed and don't have range for maybe any reason. By pressing the target acquisition button depress, you can turn on K-Mod ranging. Once turned on, turn left and right in a 30 to 60 degree bank until the rhombus or diamond is at the edge of the wings of the artificial plane silhouette on your HUD. You will then, after about eight seconds, get a one-time range with an estimated closure. All right, that's all really for the air-to-air -air modes. When co-op mode is fully implemented, I'll do a video on that.